Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Hallelujah. 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 It is a pleasure to see everybody here this evening. And um, we're going to go ahead with today's class entitled The Judgment of Israel. We're going to be going over Revelation, the eighth chapter. Again, The Judgment of Israel, Revelation, the eighth chapter. Anybody have any testimonies they would like to share? Uh, we used to do that a lot. Uh, the Father has been working and Baruch and you and your lives. I do. Just um, grateful how I started early. Um, Ms. Bogan Lula went to the physical therapist Tuesday, and she said everything was good. It had rotation on the patient was all good. Um, and she just gave us some things to work on so that we could continue developing and then she would call us to work on. Hallelujah. 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 I'll just thank you, Father, for allowing us to see a new day. Yes, sir. It is a great to be alive. <laughs> yes, Hallelujah. it is. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Okay, um, I got everything that I need in order. Let me just double check. There's one thing right quick, and we'll go ahead and get <coughs> Excuse me. this evening's class started. Glad that everybody is doing well, and that's what it's about. Okay, got the phone on mute. Okay, hallelujah. All right, Mr. Picard, we're going to stand up, face the east. We have Zabu, the man of the house, to bring us in with prayer. You might have to uh, grab him because I'm going to go so far. He, he, he's going to get he's gonna get frantic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. forsaken us in yes, that, Father. 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 You have been with us, Father, you, Father. not just individually, but yes, as a congregation. Yeah. And you have been with yeah. us yeah. as a people, Father. Yes, Father. Yes, and Father. so we thank you, Father. Thank they you, Father. look at us, the world yeah. looks at us as if we are sorrowful people, or we are messed up in the bottom of the barrel, Father, but you have called us kings. 
You have called yes, us have. queens. Yes, you you have. have called us priests. Yes, you, you have, have called have. us nothing but only good all the days of not just our life, but our, uh, but Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as well, Father. Yes, Father. All the way back to Noah and all the way back, Father, to Shem, Father. You have looked upon us as your people. Yes, Father. Father, yes. you said you created this world for us, Father. You have created all things for us, Father, the children of Yasserah, Father. And, Father, we don't take that lightly. We thank you and we praise you. We praise you, Father, because yes, you're worthy of the praise. Yes, Father. Father, we can't praise you enough. Yes. We Amen. can't give you enough praise, Father, for just being you. Yes, Father. Just being faithful. Even, Father, when we've shown you our backside on a number of occasions, you have still kept us safe. Yes, you have Father. still kept us from being turned over and thrashed by the by, by Ashton, Father. He comes to seek and destroy. That's you right. come to give life and that much more abundantly. Yes, and Father. for that we simply say thank you. We can Father, we know that we cannot praise you enough. And we do not have the capability to praise you in a way that really means nothing, Father. To praise you in a way, Father, that, that you are so awesome and wonderful and beautiful. And we don't even have it in our hearts to be that way. And so we have to even ask you for the ability to praise you in a way that pleases you. Yes, Father. And so we thank you, Father, for even being able to open our mouths and just say thank you. Father, we ask that you look in here upon uh, the Salt community, Father who has been going through a whirlwind the last few months, Father. And we ask that you meet them at the level of their needs. Yes, meet Father. them right there, Father. Asatan is trying to destroy them only because he knows that they are sent by you. Mm -hmm. Only because we know that the, he knows that they are walking with you. Only because he knows that they are making a difference, Father. In the hearts, in the lives of all that they touch, all that they cross. And because of that, he is trying to destroy them, Father. Yes, Father. And Father, he is man. And so we ask you, Father, to look in upon them today, Father. And that you do not allow not one thing to come nigh their dwelling that will destroy them in any kind of way. Yes, but that you will baruch them, Father. That you will meet them there. That you will give them the desires of their heart. Give them the things that they desire. That they can continue to blow this thing up for you. Because their only desire is to serve you, Father. Yes. And so we thank you for Mori, uh, your servant, our Father. And we thank um, your sovereign, Father. And we thank you for um, Mori uh, Shema. We thank you for Mori Shema. And Mori, um, uh, 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 what's his name? Emmanuel, Father. We thank you for more um, uh, uh, yeah. and we thank you for uh, all of the other more, more select, Father. Uh, more Yerriyahu, Father. Thank you for my Isha. We pray, Father, that you will continue to baruch them and meet them right where they need you, Father. Father, search their hearts. We ask that you search their hearts, Father. That you search their hearts, Father, and anything that you don't like, anything that you see that you don't like, that you would remove it, Father. And that you would only replace it, Father, with things that are just going to drive them forward. As Ashton continues to come against them, I pray that you continue to build them up and that you continue to make them move forward. Father, I thank you for men of your own who has a fighting spirit, Father. Yes, Father. If they do, each and every one of these guys have a fighting spirit. And that's what I love about them, Father. And so I pray that you will meet them at the level of their needs, Father. You continue to let them to, 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 uh, to, to, uh, to fight this thing out as Satan continues to come against them. We ask that you look in upon uh, 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 what's his name? Abad, Father. <laughs> that you will meet him at the level of his needs. For some reason I'm having a problem with name. That you, that you look in upon Abad, Father, our first officer, Father. Father, he's been on my heart, and I thank you for him, and I thank you for all he does for the congregation of Yasserah. I pray that you, Father, do not let this day go by at all without allowing him to fill you, come into him 
Father, and totally enlighten him and lift him up, Father. I pray that you look in, for, look in upon Solomon, upon James, upon all the other brothers and the young sisters that are here in the congregation, Father. And that as they go through this world, Father, and things are tough for them, and they're making these decisions, Father, that can affect their future, and that can affect them for years to come, that you help them to make the right decisions, even when their mama and daddy make the wrong one, Father. Yeah. Help them to make the right one, Father. It's time for them to get outside of themselves, Father, and reach for something, Father, and hold on to it, and uh, that's going to pull them forward in you. Yes. That's going to take them forward, Father. I pray that you set apart spirits, touch each and every person in this congregation, and that, Father, as we are going through back and forth and up and down and in and out, that we not forget to face the east and pray. Pray toward our home, Father. Yes, Father, we're asking to get back in our land. That's our desire. That was our forefathers' desire. To not only get in their land, but that land be restored unto them. And Father, I'm asking that you please allow us back and help us to continue to look forward and not forget that dream. But as we are making the journey, as we are on our way, I'm asking that you help us to find a piece of land, Father, even here that we may be able to take refuge, Father, to hide from things that are coming, Father. Look, Father, if you got to hide us, if you got to stand us up and make us fight, whatever you say do, we'll do. But help us to come together in unity and do it together, Father. Yes. Father, not separate, but together. Help us to fight this fight and to continue to move forward. Open our hearts so that you can move us where we need to go and do the things we need to do that we may please you, Father. That everyone that looks upon our, uh, that our lives, Father, everyone that sees us, everyone that uh, sees us walking and talking and doing whatever we do, instead of being repulsed by us, may they knee bow and may they tongue confess that Yahusha is uh, sovereign unto the glory of the Father. That is our goal. That is the desire that we have, Father, is to be able to bring the Mashiach into the hearts and the lives of all who will listen. Yes. Open up our ears and open up our eyes, Father, that we may hear you and see your word, Father, and that we will follow your commandments and live a set-apart life as you have commanded us to do, Father. And in your son, Yahushua's name, we will be ever so mindful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We will not take any for ourselves. We will give it unto you, Father, in which it belongs. And in your son, Yahushua HaMashiach's name, we pray hallelujah. 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 All the stain to the Father, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Again, I'm going to say Shabbat Shalom to everybody that's out there that is watching on YouTube, Facebook. It is a pleasure to be amongst you once again along with the congregation of Yashra'al, to go over today's lesson, again called The Judgment of Israel, Revelation Chapter 8. Chapter 8. And before we get started, like we do in all the classes that I do, and I like that I have this as a, um, as a uh, beginning stage before I get to the, uh, to the classes, I want to make sure that I always give all esteem to the Father of Yehovah for his love, his mercy, his kindness, just everything that he has been doing for the nation of Israel. We're forever in the Father's deck, so I'd like to always, before I do all of my classes, make sure that we give all the esteem to the Father. I mean, again, he's just loving, merciful, um, keeping covenants, keeping promises. I, I just can't say enough, and I believe that we should be forever in the Father's deck for everything that he has been doing for the nation of Israel, even though we collectively as a people have been extremely, extremely, extremely rebellious. Mm -hmm. And we also want to thank the Father for sending his ultimate love gift, Yahusha yes. HaMashiach, yes. who is yeah. that atoning sacrifice for the nation of Yashra'al. 
There are so many brothers and sisters that are out there who don't understand the proper um, understanding or meaning of um, the Mashiach, the Mashiach, the definite article, the Mashiach, the one that I'm talking about that is um, outlined, that's described to us in the, uh, the Brit Hadashah. That was the one that was promised to come, but we must also understand uh, the redemptive role of the Mashiach, why he had to come, why he had to die, and how important it is for us to understand the resurrection. All right, so again, all esteem to the Father for sending his son, Yahushua HaMashiach, who is that atoning sacrifice for the nation of Yashra'al. Oh, okay, Mishra Kabbalah, what we're going to do first, we're going to go ahead and, and dive right in. And we're going to the book of Hebrew, the book of Hebrews, and we want to try and... Uh, get a real good understanding of why it is very important for us to understand why the Father sent the Mashiach for the nation of Israel. And we're going to be reading Hebrews, the third chapter, verses 1 through 6. All right, 1 through 6. All right, so we have the writer of Hebrews. He's speaking to Hebrews. That shouldn't be a um, <laughs> that, that shouldn't be complicated. So wherefore, my Kodesh brethren, my set apart brethren, who are called with the calling that is from Shamayim. Listen to this now. Wherefore, my set apart brethren, who are called with the calling that is from Shamayim. Consider this, legate, or oh, we have apostle, and a Greek word for apostle, I just wanted to share with everybody, is this Greek number 0652. So where it says now, uh, wherefore my set apart brethren who are called, with a calling from Shamayim, consider this, apostle and high priest of our profession, this is our job, which now leads us now to a divine relationship with the Mashiach. And so an apostle is a delegate, a messenger, someone who is sent forth with divine orders. All right, divine orders. And we know that the Mashiach came from the Father, and he was actually now sent to the nation of Israel, not, with, not just with orders, with divine orders, mm -hmm. who was faithful to him that made him, as was Moses in all his house, for much greater, for much greater is the esteem of this man than that of Moses. Everybody just heard that, right? Mm -hmm. For much greater is the esteem of this man than that of Moses, just as the esteem of the builder of the house is greater than that of the house. This one here, uh, let me see if I can get a better translation here. Hold on one second. Come on. <coughs> yeah, King James? Yeah, but uh, now this is, uh, this is the uh, Aramaic. Aramaic, which is good, no problems. I don't know whether everybody has that. I just wanted to make sure that while I'm reading, everybody's staying together with the words here. Verse 3, for this man was counted worthy of much more esteem than Moses, insomuch as he who hath built the house have more honor than the house. Everybody agree with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. For every house is built by some man, but he that buildeth all things is of the Father. Mm -hmm. And Moses verily now was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were 
to be spoken after. Okay, so we're talking about future here. But the Mashiach as a son over his own house. Whose house is that? So we're talking about the congregation of Yahshua all. We're talking about the whole nation of Israel, both houses, mm -hmm. northern and southern kingdom. Mm -hmm. But the Mashiach as a son over his own house, whose house are we? If we hold fast, this is the thing now, this is the stipulation. If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Mm -hmm. And supporting scripture that we have for that now is the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter. Because there are rules and regulations that must be abided by in order to have this intimate relationship with the Father. You can't do it according to your own rules and regulations, but only with the rules and regulations now that are set forth by the Father. And the reason why is because this is not our house. Mm -hmm. All right? We're, uh, we're the bridegroom. To be the bride, excuse me, the Mashiach is to be the bridegroom, but we're the bride, and the bride must abide by all of the rules that are set by the Father, by the Mashiach, in order to stay inside of the house. So, um, let's go to Matthew 24, 13. Matthew 24, 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Again, he that endureth unto the end shall be saved. So, so you go back to the book of Hebrews, the third chapter. You go back to Matthew, excuse me, the book of Hebrews, the third chapter. And we were piggybacking off of Hebrews, the third chapter, verse 6. But the Mashiach has a son over his own house. Who house are we? If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. And unfortunately, now we know that not everybody's going to be able to hold on firm to uh, this doctrine, which is Torah. Because there's going to be a lot of trials and tribulations that's going to come amongst us. And not everybody's going to be able to endure to the end. And so we see all of these writings that was written now um, before our time to give us now a greater understanding on how to stand firm. Because these things are sure to come. Yes. Sure to come. Now what we're going to do is just, just dive straight into it. We're going to go to the book of um, Revelation. Yep, yes we are, little man. We're going to go to the book of Revelation, and we're going to start at the 8th chapter, and I'm just going to read down for right now. And then after that, we are break it down. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before the Father, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and again, and another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which, which is before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before the Father out of the hands or out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it unto the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightning and earthquakes or earthquake. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed hell mm. and fire mingled with blood. Mm. And they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees was burnt up, mm. and all green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded, as it were a great mountain burning with fire, was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. Mm -hmm. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and it had life died. 
and the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from Shamayim, from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of water. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so as the third part of them was darkened, and the day was shown not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. So we see um, so far um, just by the breaking of these seals that something major is, is about to happen. Major about to happen. And these things were written for our understanding and understanding prophecy now there cyclical right <laughs> okay cyclical all right and so they keep recurring over and, and over again and the reason why um, i wanted to bring that out is because we want to make sure that we put everything in its proper um context first all right because again, this will be very important that we understand that there are things that were supposed to happen based upon the Mashiach's prophecy. And he prophesied the destruction of Jerusalem. And I want everybody to also understand this now. We have Israel, and then we have the capital, we have Jerusalem. So Jerusalem was destroyed, not all Israel. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem was destroyed, mm -hmm. all right? And Jerusalem was considered the city. Mm -hmm. And so when we have in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, when it talks about when you see Jerusalem, okay, compassed about with armies, flee into the mountains. Meaning now is that you are to get out of the cities, okay, and go into the country. That's for, that was the instruction that the Father was given to the Mashiach to deliver to the nation of Israel because the nation of Israel collectively, as a people, we did not understand, okay, our, for the Mashiach's first coming. So we understand that the death and resurrection was extremely important. I was also sharing with the Mishnah um, last week is that we have one scroll. And there are seven seals on the scroll. And as each one of these scroll, uh, these seals are being broken, when the first seal was broken, the scroll wasn't open. The second, it wasn't open. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth. The seventh seal gets very interesting now because now we have the unveiling of the roll. And once now the veil is unveiled, we can now see what's written inside of the scroll. Mm -hmm. Now, Verse 8, Revelations, the 8th the chapter, verse 1. Verse 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal, okay, the seventh seal is not open, there was silence in Shamayim about the space of an hour. All right, the space of an hour. I found that to be um, very interesting. What does that mean when we have six seals broken and something mysterious happens now with the, uh, the breaking of the seventh seal? We know that there were six days of creation. Mm -hmm. The seventh day, the Father rested. Mm -hmm. And so as we see now the breaking of these seals here, each seal now 
prophetically, looking at the pattern, how the Father operates, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then there's a rest. Mm -hmm. There's a pause. The seventh day brings about uh, the pause. That's, that's the rest. Let's go to um, the book of Genesis, the seventh chapter. The book of Genesis, the seventh chapter. Let's get some more understanding on this seventh seal here. Let's go to the book of Genesis, the seventh chapter. I want to see if, um, if we can pick this up here. Because I'm going to be asking some questions. I want to see if you're able to see what I'm seeing. Hallelujah. Okay. Oh, there we go. Now I can blow it up. Watch this. Pay very close attention. Because we're talking about, we want to define the space of time where there was complete silence. Mm -hmm. Let's see if you can pick it up. And Yahuwah said it to Noah. Know, where we at? Seven and one. Seven and one. And Yahuwah said unto Noah, mm -hmm. Come you and all your house into the ark. For you have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast, you shall take to thee by sevens, the, the male and the female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. A fowls also the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did accordingly now unto all that Yahuwah commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. Now, we're talking about a time in Revelation, the 8th chapter, verse 1, where there was silence in Shamayim for about a half an hour. So there was a time of silence. Mm -hmm. And what we just read in the book of Genesis, the 7th chapter, verses 1 through 6, do you see a period of silence? Can you share with me, Saharia, um, your understanding of Genesis the seventh chapter, verses one through six, where you see a period of silence? I see it at verse four. After they brought all the animals to the surface for yet seven days, and then it rained for seven days. Hallelujah. So in verse one, Noah was commanded to go into the ark. Mm -hmm. This is very important, to go into the ark. Noah had preached for 120 years. I'm here to share with everybody, there is a such thing as you're too late. Mm -hmm. So Moses now preaches for 120 years. He goes into the ark. There was seven days of silence, meaning now that he had stopped preaching. He's now inside of the ark. There comes a point where the ministry stops. There's silence. So looking at the numbers in Revelation, the eighth chapter, we have now six seals already broken. The seventh seal comes now and there's silence. To move into that point of silence what the father says, that's it. <laughs> Noah and his family mm -hmm. goes into the ark. Mm -hmm. And we know now that seven days of silence leads to destruction. Yes. Mm -hmm. Destruction is on her way. Now, I'm glad, hallelujah, that you were able to, um, to see that. We also now... Want to go to the book? Go to the book of Matthew, 
Let's go to the book of Matthew. Let's go here. Yeah, let's go to the book of Matthew. And let's get the uh, the Master's Edition. Okay, let's go to the uh, my my War Scroll. This book has been through the times. Matthew, the twenty fourth chapter, verses 37, 39. Watch this now. The Mashiach is speaking to his disciples, his Talmudim. Mm -hmm. He's given them a prophecy of something that's going to happen in the near future to fulfill the prophecy that he's given now pertaining to the destruction of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But it's cyclical because we can also now make this applicable, applicable, right? Applicable to um, today's times. These tongue twisters here. For as in the days that were before the flood, so we know that we're talking about, excuse me, 37. 37, let's go up a little bit. What 37? Huh? 2437. Oh, stop it. But as the days of Noah were, so also the coming of the Son of Man be. Mm -hmm. But as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating mm -hmm. and drinking, marrying and giving into marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So we've already done the lesson before where we don't want to be taken away. Mm -hmm. We want to be kept. Mm -hmm. So what I found interesting now is that as in the days of Noah, they were living this lavish lifestyle. Nobody cared about anything. Mm -hmm. And what I found most important about all of this is that one of the things that... Um, was not kept in honor was marriage. Mm -hmm. Marriage was not kept in honor. And so they were marrying and giving unto marriage. We're just going from man to man, woman to woman. So we saw that the whole earth was corrupt. Mm -hmm. So as it was during that time, we see it happening today. Mm -hmm. But again, we want to make sure that everything stays in its proper order. This was happening now during the time of the Mashiach's ministry. Mm -hmm. And we see that Israel, or Jerusalem, let me be more, let me be more specific. Jerusalem was destroyed because of that wickedness. Mm -hmm. All right? So all these things now had to transpire or happen during the time of 70 AD. Mm -hmm. Very important. Now, I'm here to say that it didn't stop at 70 AD, mm -hmm. okay, because again, Jerusalem was destroyed. Jerusalem would have been the capital, but there are other cities, okay, um, outside of Jerusalem because we have the whole land of Israel. Mm -hmm. And Vespasian and Titus now, they destroyed Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So the city living, okay, in Jerusalem became very chaotic and um, and. It was, it was just a complete havoc. So, so shall it be in these latter days here, meaning that there's going to be a period where there would be no more ministry. There would be a time where there would be complete silence. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be real scary. And it's very important, important now for us to be able to understand the times that we're living in, and how these prophecies, they keep reoccurring over and over and over again. For example, when we go to the book of Isaiah, the 51st chapter, mm -hmm. let's go to that. If we can get, um, it's, no, it's Jeremiah, excuse me, Jeremiah, the 54th chapter. If we can get our good brother um, Solomon. 51st chapter, verse 51, Jeremiah, the 51st chapter, mm -hmm. verse uh, 6. You got it? 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Jeremiah 51, verse 6. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of Yahuwah's vengeance. He will render her unto, he will render unto her a recompense. Hallelujah. So Jeremiah is speaking to, let's say, Southern Kingdom Israel. Because we know now that Southern Kingdom Israel is about to go into captivity under the reign of Nebuchadnezzar. But watch what it says. It says, flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul and be not cut off in her iniquity. For this is the time of the Yahuwah's vengeance. He will render unto her a, recomp uh, a recompense. Now, um, Akoti Yidia, if you can do Revelation, the 18th chapter, verse 4. You might have to get him and put him in the chair because he's, from this point forward, it's just going to get worse. <laughs> I, I, I know this gets, and you know it like nobody else is. It, it's not going to get no easier. Um, Revelation, um, the 18th chapter, verse 4. Revelation 18, verse 4. Mm -hmm. And I heard another voice from Shamayim saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Now, Solomon, go to back to Jeremiah 51 and 6. Back to Jeremiah 51, verse 6. Read it again. Yes, please. Flee out of the midst of Babylon, and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of Yahuwah's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. So do you see now the similarities now with what's going on with the first Babylon? Mm -hmm. And we're talking about now Nebuchadnezzar and Israel now going to be in subjection um, to Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. And we see the same thing now happen in Revelation, the 18th chapter, verse 4. Mm -hmm. So it's cyclical where these prophecies now, or the messages that the Father has given the nation of Israel, it's the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. And what I want people to understand now is that when you go to the book of Daniel, the second chapter, and Daniel's the ninth chapter, when it talks about this colossal figure, Babylon, the Medo-Persian Empire, the Greeks, and the Romans, when we see Babylon being destroyed, the colossal figure is still standing. When you see now the Medo-Persian Empire being destroyed, the colossal figure is still standing. When you see the Greeks now uh, coming to play and their reign ends, we see now that the colossal figure is still standing. It's not until the colossal figure is destroyed mm -hmm. is when we now begin to see now the reign of the Mashiach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now with proper understanding and understanding scriptures from a Hebraic perspective, when we look at um, Babylon, the first Babylon, and then we have the Medo-Persian uh, Empire, or the Greco-Roman, excuse me, the Medo-Persian Empire coming up next, we see that the Medo-Persian Empire would have been now a daughter to the first Babylon. Mm -hmm. And then we see now the Greeks coming into play. The Greeks now would be um, the daughter of the Medo-Persian Empire, to the first Babylon. Mm -hmm. So it's all Babylon. Mm -hmm. All four metals represent Babylon. But what happens now is that Israel's captivity now gets worse. Mm -hmm. What I found most interesting about these four metals is that when we was under the Babylonians, we still had our identity. Mm -hmm. We're still able to speak our language. We know who we were. We knew what tribes we were from and everything. Mm -hmm. And even under the, um, the Medo-Persian Empire, mm -hmm. where we were given the opportunity now to even rebuild our temple, yeah. we still knew who we were. Mm -hmm. But again, the metals got worse. Mm -hmm. From the gold, the silver, the bronze, the iron. These metals depreciate in value because gold is more expensive than silver and iron. Mm -hmm. So with that being understood, when the Greeks came into play, guess what happened? We shall all be one people. Let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel will be no longer in their remembrance. Mm -hmm. What Israel said in the first book of Maccabees, listen, you know what? We now want to do the things of the Greeks. And so they got license and they got permission now 
to do the customs of the Greeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Israel became Greek or Greek defied, the way that my mother liked to say it. You know what? So you no longer became who you were no longer who you used to be. Mm -hmm. You now became assimilated with the people. Mm -hmm. And it got worse amongst the Romans. Mm -hmm. And so it says, come out of her, my people. We have it here in the book of um, Daniels, excuse me, in the book of Jeremiah 51, verse 6. And we also have the same thing being said in Revelation the 8th chapter, verse, Revelation 18, chapter, verse 4. So let's continue on with this. The book of Joshua, the 6th chapter. Joshua, the 6th chapter. If Moray Eliyahu is watching me, I have, um, he blessed me with this, uh, this new MacBook. And, and I still have this habit of using my finger to scroll down. Well, you can't do that. You can do it with this one. With this one here, you have to use the, uh, the keys here to actually um, scroll down. So we're still talking about this moment of silence. We're going to go to the book of Joshua, the sixth chapter. And we're going to have... Um, let me see where we're going to go with this here, what I want to do. Joshua, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 15. 1 to 15. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Yidiya, if you could read 1 to 15 for me, please, I would gladly appreciate it. Okay. Jeremiah, I'm sorry, Joshua 6, verse 1. Yes. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. Hallelujah. And you will said unto Joshua, See, I have given thee, I have given into thy hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. Hallelujah. And ye shall compass the city, and ye all men of war, and go round about the city once. Okay, that's going to be very important. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Read those instructions again. Okay. First of all, this is just an example. This is Jericho. All right. So read those instructions again. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go around about the city once. Okay. Go, go around the city one time. Keep it going. Thus shalt do this six days. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have, this will be the first day. And just, just, okay, this is going to be six times, all right? Six times. Mm -hmm. Okay, we going. And seven priests shall bear, shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. Seven priests, mm -hmm. ram's horns. Uh-huh. And the seventh day, ye shall come past the city seven times. Okay, so this is what we have now. On the seventh day, they're going to come past the city of Jericho seven times. In one day. In one day, right? So this is six times, once a day. Once a day. And on the seventh day, they're going to march around seven times. Mm -hmm. Okay, along with the seven priests. And they're going to have ram's horns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets. Okay. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, mm -hmm. and the wall of the city shall fall down flat. This, this shout happens on what day? Seventh. Okay, the seventh day. Okay, we have to shout. Read on. And the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Mm -hmm. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priest and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of Yahuwah. And he said unto the people, Pass on and compass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of Yahuwah. And it came to pass, when Joshua had spoken unto the people, 
that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before Yahuwah and blew with the trumpets. And the ark of the covenant of Yahuwah followed them. And the armed men went before the priests that blew with the trumpets. And the reward came after the ark, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice. Neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout. Then shall ye shout. Mm -hmm. So the ark of Yahuwah can pass the city going about it once. And they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning and the priests took up the ark of Yahuwah. And the seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark of the Yahuwah went on continually and blew with the trumpets. And the armed men went before them. But the reward, re, re reward came after the ark of Yahuwah, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they compassed the city once and returned to the camp. So they did six days. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day, they compassed the city seven times. Hallelujah. So, what we're trying to do is see that in order to understand the book of Revelations, all right, it is very good for us to understand all of the Bible because the Father is working through a pattern. It's all a pattern. The pattern never changes. Mm-hmm. Um, like I've been saying since I've been doing this lesson with the book of Revelations is that in order to understand the book of Revelations, we must make sure that we understand Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. Very important. So, in re relations to Revelation, the eighth chapter, Solomon, can you share with us mm -hmm. what do you see in connection to Revelations, the eighth chapter? This moment of silence versus what we just talked about in the book of Joshua, um, the sixth chapter, verses one through fifteen. Okay. How do we make that mesh to show that um, the Father is working with a pattern, and the pattern never changes? What do you see with this whole taking of Jericho? For six days, they were quiet and walking around the. Around Jericho, around the walls of Jericho, and on the seventh day, they shouted. Right, absolutely. So, the instructions were, in order to be successful in taking over Jericho, imagine the type of patience, and you must mm -hmm. follow everything according to the Father's plan in order to be successful. Mm -hmm. If not, you're not going to be able to take the city. And so now we have these men of war going around Jericho for what, one, once a day and they want to keep quiet. Nobody in the camp can say anything. The second day, the third day, the, no, nothing. Keep quiet. On the seventh day, okay, this is when you do the shout and you go and you take the city. So now we have six days of silence. Mm -hmm. Six days of silence. Mm -hmm. When you go to the book of Revelations now, the eighth chapter, the first verse, six seals were broken. Then there was silence mm -hmm. in Shamayim. Mm -hmm. The seventh seal is broken. Mm -hmm. When the seventh seal is broken, what do we now have? We have the seven yeah. angels, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. seven trumpets mm -hmm. about to blow. You have the seven priests mm -hmm. yeah. with ram's horns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When the seventh seal is broken, mm -hmm. you have seven angels with seven trumpets mm -hmm. and all hell is about to break loose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see this in the story of Noah yeah. mm -hmm. and you see this with the story of Joshua. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It meshes like a hand in the glove. Mm -hmm. But if you pay very close attention we will be able to see it. So I'm glad that we have 
such um, patience, patient and um, understanding mishmikah is that we were able to pick that up just like that. And I say hallelujah for the congregation of Yashra'al. So we're going back to Revelations, the eighth chapter. Mm -hmm. And we're going to verse two. Let me go back to verse one again. And when he had opened the seventh seal now, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. I'm not giving it to how long is, is, is a half an hour. That's not what we're doing. I'm just sharing here, okay, um, that there was silence. And there's a lot of understandings that I've, I've heard. I don't want to get into that. So, again, and I saw the seven angels which stood before the Father. And watch this now. And to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar. Now, I want everybody to understand also is that this vision that John the Revelator is seeing <coughs> is in heaven. Mm -hmm. All right. There's a sanctuary in heaven. Oh, yeah. There's a throne in heaven. There's four beasts, and we talked about those four beasts now because you go to the book of Ezekiel, the first chapter, I mean the first chapter, in Ezekiel, the tenth chapter, and you also go to the book of Isaiah, it talks about these four beasts. Mm -hmm. These four, I mean, the, uh, the, eye, the, the eyes of, no, excuse me, the head of a man and, and of the eagle and of a hawk, we see all of that. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about this whole thing here now is that these four beasts now are very relevant in history, mm -hmm. very relevant. They're so relevant where we see that even when Solomon was building the temple, he painted on the wall cherubims. Mm -hmm. Okay, these were um, angelic beings that had wings. He's drawing these paintings now and in the wall of the temple. Mm -hmm. Also, you see these same figures in the walls of Egypt. Anybody ever notice that? It's, oh, what yeah. I'm trying to share here is that this man has destroyed everybody's history. Hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not going to get in, into it today, mm -hmm. but... Those pyramids that are that are on the Giza Plateau out there in Egypt, they're there for a reason. And there's a lot that we can also learn from that. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about the chief cornerstone uh, a little bit later because um, th there's some information that I find interesting where it, it's, it, it's, it looks as if some are saying that was that when you look at the peak of the of the Great Pyramid, mm -hmm. it looks as if a capsule is missing. Right. And so we know now that the Mashiach is the chief cornerstone. There are some understandings that that capsule now, that chief corner piece now, will actually now be replaced back on that pyramid. But I'm just here to share is that those pyramids now um, they, they withstood the test of time yep. um, and they're there for a reason. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we can see now in the carvings and some of the pictures that are inside of the walls there. Now, back to this here. We have again where, um, and I saw seven angels in verse 2, 8 and 2, and I saw seven angels which stood before Elohim, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and it was given unto him much incense. So we need to understand now what were the what was the incense that this angel had that he should offer it with the prayer of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Now to understand that. What we're going to do is let's go to the book of 
Hmm. <laughs> Let me read down just a little bit more. And the smoke of the this is Revelation eight chapter verse four. Let me back up here just a little bit. A little bit. Um, that he should offer it. This is verse three. That he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Verse four. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before Elohim out of the angel's hand. Now, so there's a golden censer or this tray that holds a particular product, which is frankincense. Mm -hmm. And so now we need to understand where did the fire come from to light these incense now in order for it now to be a, a sweet uh, smelling savior to the Father. Right. So we would have to understand temple services. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the book of Luke, the first chapter. Luke, the first chapter. The reason why I'm going so specific with this, because I'm finding this very amazing. Mm -hmm. And it helps me now to become a better person because I'm beginning now to even act. After being in this walk for, since 1992, every time I read the scriptures, something else is being revealed to me. Mm -hmm. I'm learning now to ask more questions. I'm, I'm, I'm now homing in on dates. Dates are very important. Mm -hmm. And if we can't understand dates, chronological order, keeping things in context, instead of taking everything into the future, you're going to make a, listen, you're going to have problems. Major, major problems. And this is the reason why people who um, don't believe in the Mashiach, they're saying that the Mashiach's prophecies never came to fulfillment. Because the Mashiach is saying things like, there are some of you who are here at this particular point would not die right. until you see the coming of the Mashiach. Right. right, and so they did see the coming of the Mashiach through the destruction of Jerusalem, and there were some of the Talmudim of the Mashiach still alive at that time. Mm -hmm. So if you to take Matthew, the 24th chapter, and bring it into 2021, yes, it's going to look like none of those things came to fruition, mm -hmm. which they did come to fruition with the destruction of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. That did happen. Now, watch this. Matthew, excuse me, the book of Luke, the first, Luke, the first chapter, verse 9, and I'm going to read, where am I? Luke, the first chapter, verses 9 through 14. That's what we have. Luke, the first chapter, Matthew, Mark, Luke. Okay. Watch how important these incense are. I'm going to start at verse 8, excuse me. And it came, Luke, the first chapter, verse 8, I'm going to read down to verse 11. And it came to pass that while he, which is Zacharias, right, the priest's office before Elohim in the order of his course, Zechariah was of the eighth course of Abijah. Uh -huh. This priestly order was set up by David. According to the customs of the priest's office, his, watch this now, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the father, or the sovereign. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the father, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. So this is where this gets very, very important because we see John the Revelator in heaven. And we're talking about a sanctuary. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a golden altar and we're talking about incense. What's here on this physical terrain is also a service that's being done in heaven. Mm -hmm. 
In heaven, it talked about 24 elders. 24 elders, and we have here 24 elders, and Zechariah being of the eighth course of Abijah, and he's taking the prayers of the saints before the altar to be a sweet smelling savior to the Father. So we have in uh, the book of Revelations, chapters 3 and 4, the same thing happening. Now, I am so glad that everybody is following along. Um, because this is marvelous. Simply marvelous. Revelation, the 8th chapter, verse 5. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it unto the earth, and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings. Now, we have to understand now where did this fire come from? Outside of the temple now we have what we call the brazen altar. The brazen altar now is where the animal sacrifices um, are, are, are slaughtered at. And now what's used now to ignite that fire to burn these sacrifices now, that fire must come from the brazen altar. So you take that, that fire now and you add it to the incense and it now uh, becomes a sweet smelling savior. We're going to go to um, let look. let's go to the book of Leviticus the 10th chapter. Leviticus, the 10th chapter. What's going on in Shamayim with this vision that John the Revelator is seeing? Um, it just had me wired. It had me wired because you now have a man that's in the divine presence of the Father, of the Mashiach. The divine presence. And I like to know what is going on because it would be for my benefit on my conduct on how I need to behave because in order to now to be in the presence, because these are also called the angels of presence. Not everybody is allowed to come into the presence of the Mashiach because of what happened in Revelations the fifth chapter through his death and resurrection and him being worthy now to mm -hmm. open the book. Mm -hmm. All right now, Leviticus the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 3. Watch this. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer. But watch this. We see this, um, this protocol or this service also being done in heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but we have Nadab and Abihu, they didn't take, neither took of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon. But watch this now. They offered strange fire before Yahuwah, which he commanded them not. Mm -hmm. So, verse 2, and there went out fire from the sovereign and devoured Nadab and Abi, Abihu, and they died before the father of the sovereign. And Moses said unto Aaron, this is it that um, the sovereign spoke, saying, I will sanctify, I will be sanctified in them that come near me, or to draw near. So when we say the prayers, six o'clock every morning, this is something that the congregation of Yashua all what we do. And these prayers now brings us near. We're drawing near to the Father. We're making supplication, the prayers of the saints. 
This is what's happening. And as Mori Eliyahu always say, this is a message that I want to give to the saints, the saints, the saints. These are the prayers of the saints that happen every day at, with the congregation of Yeshua all at 6 o'clock. We have the prayers of the saints drawing near. Mm -hmm. But we have Nadab and Abihu now bringing strange fire or unauthorized fire, meaning this. When we come and present our prayers to the Father, because it's going to be a sweet smell, incense, that means that I can't have now strange fire inside of me where I have hatred, animosity, jealousy, and envy towards you. That's called strange fire. Meaning now is that I can put myself in harm where I can be consumed because now anything that is presented to the Father has to be Kodesh. Listen, I, I, I pray that we all understand how important this walk is. And this, and this, and this is a trial. I get it. We all go through our bumps and bruises and everything like that, and we pray to have a, a peaceful heart. Because there's a lot of things that's going on out here. But I just want everybody to see these words. They're very important to come near. To be in the presence of the Father. Listen. <laughs> we can't take this ministry lightly. We can't. And I believe that some of us are not taking this walk seriously enough. You see what happened with um, Adab and um, Nabihu here. Nadab and Abihu, excuse me. Leviticus, the 16th chapter. We almost done, Mr. Scott. It's just that, um, <laughs> to how you tell you, I, I'll be reading, I'll fall asleep, I get back up, <laughs> I'll fall asleep. It's just that there, there's so much here. And when I'm reading, a, a lot of times what I do is that I close my eyes and I meditate on it mm -hmm. because it, it's so, for me, mind blowing. Mm -hmm. Because again, the father's not playing. He's, he's really not playing. We have to make sure that we come right and exact. This is the book of Leviticus, the 16th chapter, verse 12. Um, I'm going to start 11 and 12. And Aaron shall bring the bullock. Again, this is the book of Leviticus, the 10th chapter, verses, the 16th chapter, excuse me, verses 11 and 12. Leviticus 16, verses 11 and 12. And Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house. So we know that um, the high priest Aaron, now he goes into the Holy of Holies, where the, uh, the mercy seat is and everything like that. And he makes this grand atonement for the nation of Israel in the seventh month and the tenth day. We all know that. Which shall make an atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself. Watch this now. And he should take... Yeah, um, yeah, now in the 12th verse, now we're in. And he should take a censer, come on now, full of burning coals of fire from off the altar. Off the altar now, before Yahuwah, in his hands full of sweet incense, beaten small, and bring it within the veil. Okay, to bring it in the veil, now... When we go back to the book of um, Revelations, now the 8th chapter, when it talks about, again, but with the 3rd verse, I'm going to read on down, just straight through, because everybody knows what's going on now. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer, mm -hmm. and there was given to him much incense, which is the prayer of the saints, right? Mm -hmm. The prayer of the saints, and that he should offer it with the prayer of all the saints, upon the golden altar which is before the throne and the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before Elohim out of the angel's hands verse 5 and the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar 
And but watch this now. And he cast it into the earth, and there was voices and thunders and lightnings and upon the earth. The question is now is that when we take this golden censer and this incense, and he throws it to the earth, and there's lightnings and thunders and earthquakes, why? Why would there be thunderings, earthquakes, and this havoc upon the earth? It's because now these saints now have already died. Mm -hmm. They already died. And we have now, our first example, we're going to have to go to this right now. We see now that this is now actually now the blood of the saints crying out. When we go now to the story of Cain and Abel, remember the father now comes to Cain and says, where is your brother Abel? Because his blood cries out to, uh, to me from the earth. Mm -hmm. This is a righteous man, Abel. His blood, think of that now. His blood crieth out. These are this this is the um this is the voice now of the prayers now of the saints. And we're talking about this later now, is that these saints are under the altar. They're under the altar. Think about this now. The, these saints that have died mm -hmm. for the testimony of Yahushua HaMashiach mm -hmm. as Stephen did. Mm -hmm. These saints are under the altar and they're crying out Sovereign, sovereign, how long mm -hmm. is this going to go on? When will you revenge or recompense? Mm -hmm. Recompense means to pay back. Yes. Mm -hmm. Pay back. Mm -hmm. Do we really know what happened in 70 AD with Vespasian and Titus? Mm -hmm. We really need to take some time out and read. The book of Josephus and Eusebius and talk about how horrendous, how merciless these people were. Mm -hmm. Listen, there were women that was giving suck. All right, I have a baby and I, I can only imagine this. The mother is giving suck and know what? Vespasian and Titus now, they had no compassion. They killed the mother and the baby while the baby was giving suck. Mishpachar, uh, to understand history is going to be extremely important. Because I can just read this straight down. Mm -hmm. But to go into the intricates and understand what happened mm -hmm. is something totally different. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just like I was sharing with uh, Maury Emanuel earlier when I was speaking with him. When I was in school... And I was reading about slavery and, and all of that stuff like that. Okay, all right, fine. No problem. But as I got older yeah. and I was speaking with my grandmother, mm -hmm. and when she began to share with me, listen, my great-grandmother was a slave. Mm -hmm. And she began to tell me now of stories that her grandmother told her. It hit home. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It, it's, it's different now. Mm -hmm. To read it. Because, not saying everybody, but some people would say, listen, you know what? Well, that happened to them. Right. But when I found out that, listen, you know what? This now happened to my family also. Mm -hmm. it, it hit home. Yeah. When my grandfather began to talk, I'm just going to just share just one story because of time. No, is that two little stories here where my, just, just two, my grandfather was sharing with me is that his brother was walking down this dirt road with a little white girl. With a little white girl. And my grandfather's brother never came home. And so I said, well, granddad, what happened? He said, that was pretty much about the end of the story with that. Well, I said, well, this is, this is your brother. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you go throughout the neighborhood and ask, you know, listen, I saw my son walking with your daughter 
where is my son? My grandfather looked at me and he smiled. He said, listen, uh, boy, you didn't do that back then. Hmm. And so my grandfather told that story to me in his late 60s. And so he was telling me that they, they know what happened to him. They, they killed him, did whatever they wanted to do to him. But they didn't go looking for him. Can you imagine that? Your son was seen walking with this girl, and he never comes home, but you know not to go asking or looking for questions because you know what? This is going to now bring havoc on mm -hmm. your, your household mm -hmm. where everybody in your house can be killed. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow. And so it's easy to say, well, I would have did this and I would have did that. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. easy to do that. Yeah. Right. My grandfather told me another story where there was a time when when um, the picking of, of cotton or whatever that they was doing, when they wouldn't meet their quota, there was tricks that they were used, they used to do. When they would wet the cotton to try to make it heavier so they, they could meet the quota. But there was times when certain men and women wasn't able to meet the quota. And your life was now in danger. Mm -hmm. And so there was a particular lake, and, and again, it wasn't a true story, but it, it sounds fascinating where these men now and women would jump into the lake and commit suicide and they would drown themselves. Mm -hmm. And there was this old folklore that they would, they would tell is that whenever you go fishing there, uh, a hand now will, will grab the fishing pole and snatch the fishing pole into the water. And if you're not careful, they'll pull you into the water too. But being a young boy, I'm like, really granddaddy, for real, wow. I don't want to go fishing there. <laughs> you, just, you know? Fish <laughs> yeah. And so again, but just the stories though. Just the stories. And so I say all of that to say is that understanding what happened to Israel in 70 AD and reading the history and then reading what we have here, it gives it more energy, more light. And for me, it makes me want to be on my best behavior. Meaning now I have to be the best husband yes. that I have to be. Yes. Yes. I can't beat my wife. Yes. I can't leave my, I, I, I can't do those things. Mm -hmm. Because I understand the penalty behind it. And I believe maybe the reason why people are doing what they're doing is because they don't understand the consequences behind, behind it. it. Come on now, there's consequences behind everything that we do. Let's get back to this here because uh, pretty much I've already outlined uh, a whole lot of this stuff here. Um, verse 6. And the angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. So now we have the breaking of the sixth seal. The seventh seal is, is broken. There was uh, uh, this quietness in Shamayim in the space of, um, let's just say, that it was a half an hour. I can't, I don't know the breakdown of that. There's too many in Maybe at another time, all right? I don't have all the answers to the puzzle here. Maybe somebody else does. But these seven angels now in verse 6, they had the seven trumpets now, and they were preparing themselves to sound. That is, that, I, I, I'm like, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen, there's also silence in heaven. It's because the Mashiach is sitting on the throne. Imagine this. The Mashiach enters the room, and everybody now must pay attention to the grand master mm -hmm. who has now entered into the courtroom. Mm -hmm. Picture this. There are seven messengers with trumpets. They're preparing to blow the shofars. The, the, the ram's horns. Because the scroll is now open. We're, gonna, we're about to read what's, what, what's in it. Mm -hmm. How can you not fear? Hmm. When you go to court and the judge deliberates over your case, whether or not you're going to do, are you going to walk free or you're going to do 15, 20, 25, 30 years? Mm -hmm. You get up. When the judge comes in and you 
Stand at attention. Everybody is quiet. The judge said everybody can sit down. Now let's read the verdict. The seven angels are about to read the verdict. You see how it's, it works all hand in hand? Mm -hmm. I want to be in a situation where in that great day of judgment where I'm already now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to use the bathroom all over myself, all right? Because again, you know, I'm, I mean, so. yeah, it, it, because you know, you're waiting for the verdict, man. It's about to happen. Yeah, this, this is it. Because listen, you know what, all right? Because everything that we do is being recorded. Being recorded. Everything. I can put up the greatest front in the world here. Mm -hmm. Go home, beaten to hell, you happy death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, then. Not taking care of my responsibilities or anything like that. So it's not what I say and do here, but also what I do when I get home. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so the books are going to be opened up. Kasada by, you did this wrong, you did that wrong, you did this wrong, you did that wrong. But I also see that, listen, you know what? You, you, you made some changes in your life. Okay, you did this, you did that and everything like that. I'm praying that the Father said, listen, you know what? Okay, you know what? Come on in. And yeah. then we see Ezekiel 43 and 44 come into play. Mm -hmm. Because there still must be a process which goes with Jeremiah 31, 31, where no man should no longer say, know ye the Father, for we should all know him. But remember now, the 12 apostles now, are going to be sitting on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Because mm -hmm. right now, we only know in part. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We only know in part. So we want to be found worthy mm -hmm. to get to that point where we can say, listen, okay then, show us the rest of the puzzle so that we can be in, submissive, uh, in submissiveness promptly to the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of things we still don't know. Mm -hmm. And we're committing sin every single day. Mm -hmm. Of course. And so I do listen, we listen, listen to me. What's about to go down in Revelation? Because I don't believe that everything has been fulfilled, because everything is cyclical. Mm -hmm. Meaning now is that Mishmachai, we have the breaking of the seven seals. Mm -hmm. We have the seven trumpets. Mm -hmm. And we have the seven vows. Mm -hmm. all, it, it, it just intensifies. Mm -hmm. You got the book of Josephus, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's amazing. It is a... Oh boy. That's all I have to say is, is, is oh boy. Okay? The seven angels. I'm going to read the book of Tobit. Um, the book of Tobit. These angels are, are very important. The book of Tobit. This is in um, our apocryphal books because these angels now are in the presence of the Mashiach. And to be in the presence of the Mashiach is, woo! You got to be right, bro. You got to be right. This is the book of Tobit, the 12th chapter, verse 15. I am Raphael, watch this now, one of the seven Kodesh angels, which present the prayers of the saints, and which go in and out before the esteem of the Holy One. We're reading here in Revelation, the eighth chapter, Verse 6, one of the seven angels is named Raphael that stands in the presence of the Holy One. He goes in and out. Listen, brothers, my sisters, there are recorders that is recording every single thing that we do. You're not going to be you're not going to be able to get away with anything. It's not going to happen. So that, so that, so when the that great day judge of, of judgment comes to each and every one of us, it's going to be a righteous judgment. Mm -hmm. Is what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. A righteous judgment. Ah, I, okay, all right. 
Luke, the first chapter. These angels here, the power of prayer. I pray that everybody, again, is understanding how serious this is. Because uh, I know it's making me now want to be on my best behavior. This is Luke, the first chapter, verse 19. And the angel answered, Zachariah said unto him, I am Gabriel. So we have Raphael, we have Gabriel that stand in the presence of Elohim. This is an angel of presence. <laughs> that stand in the presence of Elohim. And I am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these good tidings which he had, again, Zechariah's position was to present the, um, the prayer of the saints, and he had also now inquired about having an heir. Okay, and his prayers were answered because he, this is a prayer of the saint, and the father answered his prayer and gave him an heir. All right? Mm -hmm. I've been asking for a, a male heir, okay, since 1992, Okay, and at this late stage of the game, it came to fruition. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Okay, and so again, I'm not, okay, when I say saint, I'm using saint in my particular situation where I knew that there were things in my life that I needed to change. Mm -hmm. Needed to change. I needed to make vows. And I believe, because there's no such thing as a coincidence, is when I began to make major changes in my life, when I began to say, listen, you know what? I'm going to stand on this square, and whatever happens in my personal life, these are going to be loved ones. Come on now, you don't hear me. There's going to be loved ones. Loved ones that you rub elbows with, man. And listen, you know what? They're going to fall by the wayside. Yes. Are you... Yes. Willing and do you truly understand the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, when I come to send division inside of your house? Mm -hmm. Your house. There will be enemies inside of your in, in, foes inside of your own house, your mm -hmm. family members. Mm -hmm. That's going to turn you in. Mm -hmm. Who's not going to give a crap about you. Mm -hmm. no. Will you still be able to stand on your square? Mm -hmm. Because this is when we now get the title of saint. Mm -hmm. But it's going to come about through now praying and making our open confessions to one another. Listen, you know what? I used to behave this way, but I no longer behave that way anymore. Mm -hmm. I have better control where I don't have to yell and scream and, 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 and do all this other stuff inside of, of, of an argument with my each child. Listen, I ain't got time for that. Listen, this is where it is. We're going to do it this way, and, and that's it. You know, we can come and compromise whatever the case like that might be as long as it's following Torah, but we're not going to have no three or four or five hour conversation getting the headaches and, and all. I, I'm not doing that. Bro. I've been there, done that. It, it, it doesn't work. And again, I am not saying that the information that Isha might bring, we can't sit down and, and discuss it. But as far as arguing and, and screaming and threatening things like that, nah, listen, even when I came into this walk in 1992, I used to do that. And I'm here to share with you now. I don't have time to do that. Listen, you know what? We're either going to do it this way or not. All right? I'm not begging, pleading, crying, boo-hooing. I'm going to drink your bath water. Baby, baby, please don't go. See, oh, nah, 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 bro. Listen, you know what? I come to find out when you begin to do all of that, guess what? The woman, she's not going to respect you anyway. And she leaves anyway. Yeah, yeah, she's gonna leave anyway. But listen, you know, I got this Negro down to um, to drink my bath water and and, 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 and and pay my rent. And you know, as soon as you come home from work, and you know, baby, baby oh, no. tell us who is taking nah, the bath. Nah, uh, 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 nah, uh, uh. As long as that woman is following Torah, okay. Yes. To listen, you know what? It is that it is that man's responsibility now to be that uh, Mashiach inside of his household. Yes, he's supposed to do everything that he needs to do to protect. His e shop. Yes. But if she wants to go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, she believes that she can go do this and do that. Listen, you know what? All right, see ya. <laughs> All right, yeah. no, no biggie. And so, again, we just have to make sure. But again, these are the messengers of the angels now that stand in the presence of 
the Father. Let's just read on down because everything else is pretty much simple, all right? Uh, we really don't have to go into any more uh, breaking down of anything. So, but it just gets interesting. You would just have to pretty much just read the book of Josephus to see um, exactly what happens from this point going forward. Uh, we have, uh, in verse 7, the first angel sounded, because it was prepared to sound. Now the first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and there was cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all the green grass was burnt up. Now, this actually happened when we began to read the book of Josephus pertaining to everything that was going on in Jerusalem. This did happen because there was a great famine in, um, in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So there was no source of the fruit trees, anything that, was, that could sustain Israel during that time, it was all destroyed. But this is now is going to happen on a grander level. Mm -hmm. A grander level. Let's recall, listen... We're going to have to really get it right with the Mashiach. Really. Mm -hmm. You can't save enough. Mm -mm. You can't. <laughs> you can't buy enough bullets. Mm -hmm. And see, if you could, mm -hmm. we could easily say, I saved myself. Mm -hmm. Yes. But we're not saying, don't save. Right. We're not saying that, right? but there's going to come a point because we have to look at now the examples that happened during the first exodus. Mm -hmm. We came out with plenty of vi uh, victuals. Mm -hmm. We came out with a whole lot of stuff, mm -hmm. but it didn't last for 40 years. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> okay? So it got to the point now where we needed to surrender and depend only on the Father. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah, because only thing works. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's it. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's going to get to the point now where, like Yasabu would like to say, you know what? Because Israel got to the point where they were, um, they got to the point where they was eating the same thing all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, Eli yeah. Teharia tells me, Oh, I know that you, you don't like leftovers. And it's not, it's not necessarily to that I don't like leftovers. It's just that I like to spread them out. You know, right, if we right. had this tonight, Tuesday, I don't want to eat Monday. Let's cook something else. And then Wednesday, I'll eat Tuesday. You know, so right. we kind of like dump around. But we, I mean, just and laugh, you know, we're just having fun. But I just wanted to share, though, is that um, in the wilderness, you know, we, we just ate that, that manna. That's, that's all that we have. And so, what's interesting now, yeah, though, is that, today. yeah, yeah, you know, so we, and, you know, I like to call the man of the maple bars, you know, that's, that's just my thing, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a maple bars uh, fanatic, you know, so, but this man now had the necessary nutrients mm -hmm. now to maintain us, yes. because throughout the 40 years in the wilderness, yes. we were all yes. healthy, we all looked good. We all still look good and healthy. Mm -hmm. Eating this manna now for 40 years in the wilderness. With the understanding now, we do know that there was um, a generation of, I think it was a 19 and under died. No. no 19 and over. 19 and over died, right. No, I think it was 20. It, 20? It was 20 and over died. 20 and right. over. Well, over 20 died. Over 20 died. Right. And so 19 or 20 or 20 and, and younger, yeah. they, they were. 20 and younger. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, you think about that one. <laughs> Why did they get that old? They look good. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, we don't age the way the other nations do anyway. You know, we, we, we have that, that, that bump about us. So, um, and, the, and the second angel sounded, this is eight verse, and the second angel sounded, and as where a great mountain burned with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. All of that is explained in the... Um, in the book of Josephus, all of this is basically um, explained in the book of Josephus. Uh, it's just that, uh, again, it's going to happen on a grander level where um, this is not going to be worldwide. Or a third part of the creatures which were in the sea is going to die. Um, a third part of the ships is going to be destroyed. And the third angel sounded, they fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and the fountains of water. And the name of that star is called Wormwood, okay? 
and the third part of the waters became wormwood. Um, that wormwood, hallelujah. That wormwood is so important. Um, Teharia, if you can read that for me, please. Um, Exodus, the 15th chapter, verse 23. Exodus, the 15th chapter, verse 23. We want to explain this. Um, we're going to look at this wormwood a little bit. So, babe, if you could do that for me, please. Exodus, the 15th chapter, verse 23. Exodus 15, uh, verse 23. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Marah. Right, it was named Marah because uh, the waters were bitter. And so we have now this wormwood is going to cause this water to be uh, bitter. So, I believe you can go to the last script for me on uh, Jeremiah 23 15. Jeremiah 23, 15. 23, 15. Uh, Jeremiah 23, 15. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, uh, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of God. Wow. Uh, for... I mean, for from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into the land. Right. So we see now this word wormwood isn't a new word. Well, we see now this bitter water now. We see it in, in the exodus uh, of Israel coming out of Egypt. We see it now in the book of Revelations. Now the 8th chapter, verse 11. We see it also in the first captivity under Nebuchadnezzar where we see now this wormwood where the water becomes bitter. Mm -hmm. Okay, in the fourth angel, verse 12, and the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the water, so as the third part of them, of them was darkened, and the day shone not a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying, with a loud voice, woe, or oh, destruction, 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 by the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the sound of the three angels, which were not yet sounded. Okay, and so we stop here at the at the third, um, at the fourth sound of the angel. We have three more um, angels to sound off their trumpets, and we'll talk about that, and we'll fill in the rest of the blanks now with verses twelve, with verse twelve next week. All right, in Mishpachah, that is this Saturday or this Shabbat's lesson, I pray that uh, we were able to gather some information, some understanding with one. that. Are there any questions? Anybody, is there anything going on in, um, oh, nothing going on, Mark. Okay, hallelujah. All the names of the Father, so... With that, I'll blow the shofar seven times, and we have the firstborn heir in righteousness, the firstborn son in righteousness, that the Father has blessed you, Zabud Yahu, the firstborn yeah. son in righteousness, okay, to end us with prayer. That guy. Yep, that guy. <laughs> First, thank you, praise you for waking us all up this morning and letting us be able to partake in your set apart Shabbat. I thank you for keeping us throughout this week, Father, um, keeping us through these tough times and letting us be able to go and come back uh, to and fro to places that we need to go throughout the week um, safely 
uh, without hurt, harm, or danger. I pray that you look upon uh, those who are sick. Yes, Father. Um, and you add a special blessing upon them to heal them um, where they're not sick anymore. Mm. Um, the mores, other members of congregations. Um, I just pray that you look upon everyone. Father, I pray that you uh, give a special blessing to Mark Sadaba for coming here and teaching us, Father, your word. Um, I thank you for him being able to just take time out of his week to come and sit, sit down with us to impart us with knowledge upon about you and what you have for us, yes. Father. Hallelujah. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Father, and I pray that you write it upon our hearts that we may internalize it and uh, apply it to our daily lives to uh, help us not miss the mark, Father, in anything that we do. Help us to follow your lead and that you may order our steps that we may follow mm -hmm. and go the right way and do the right thing to end up where we need to be because the ultimate goal is, again, to stay upon the mark. That's right. Hallelujah. You're right. I pray that you keep us through this next upcoming week, Father. Yes. Um, anyone who is going through anything who needs a special prayer for them, Father, I pray that you brook them through the tough times they may be going through. I pray that you keep a hand, keep your hand over everything that we do and everyone. I pray that uh, I pray for the scatter, your scattered nation, Father, your children who are scattered across the four corners of the world. Pray that you keep them and, and wake them up, Father, those who are not awake. Yes, Father. Um, and if that be through us, help us to wake them up. Or if that be through someone else, help them to use them, Father, to wake them yes, up. Yes, Father. I pray all these things in your pr precious set-apart son's name. Hallelujah. 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 And one quick thing I want to say um, also, too, is that I pray for the food. Uh, Father, we want to thank you for the food that we're about to receive. We pray that it be healthy and nourishing for our body. Father, we pray that you bless the with the hands that are prepared the food. Yes, Father. Father, we just give all thanks to you through your son, Yahusha HaMashiach. Yes, Father. Father, we, will, we also want to uh, give uh, prayer also to um, to Solomon and James as yes, they go out into the world, Father, and um, you know, they're, they're beginning to live on their own, understanding what life is all about. Yes, and Father. Father, I pray that you just keep them strong, Father. I mean, uh, some great young guys here, Father. Uh, we pray that they can uh, be that example for the congregation of Yahshua all. Because people are watching. Yes. Uh, we, we, we are looking at, Father, um, all of the effort, all of the, uh, the, 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 the long hours, Father, all of the money that was spent, Father, in educating um, Solomon and James. So yes. we, I just want to give thanks, Father, to you for having Zabud and Gideon to have that zeal to bring forth good men. Because yes. that is rare. I mean, we just can't take those things lightly, Father, because this is the next generation where we need to be able to set the example for the next generation mm -hmm. when there's a generation that is coming up, Father, that understands Torah, yes. that will know how to be patriarchs in their houses. Yes. Not to be once, Father, to know how to stand fast in Torah and make sure that everything is done in accordance to Torah. Looking yes. at the, the examples on how their Ima or their Av and their Ima operates and how they are to get their Ishas based upon how they see their Ima yes. acts towards their oh, Av yeah, and yes, Father. Yes, yes. Father, I pray that I'm also a good example. More Eliyahu is a good yes. example. Yes. All of us, Father, that have children, Father, especially the congregation of Yashra Om, yes. we have children that are growing up and I would like to be able to use James and Solomon, or yes. Yaakov and Solomon, as an example for my son, as he, as yes. he, as he grows up, excuse me, Father, yes. as he grows up, to say, listen, you know what? These are role models that we have that's present inside of the congregation yes. that you can use to be successful also in your life. Yes. So, Father, we give thanks and honor to you always, okay? And I just thank you for having the opportunity to come here and teach the congregation of Yashra all and, um, and just being amongst good brothers and sisters, yes. everybody, Mori yes. Yahu, Shia, yes. um, uh, um, Isri Yahu, um, Abad Yahu, Yekezekiya, Moshe, all of these brothers here, Father, that makes up or comprise of the congregation of Yashra all, Father, I just want to say thank you. Hallelujah, thank you. hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Hall